Hey, be gorgeous. Welcome to Bravo and Please, where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. Hey everyone, today's guest is Cornell grad turned star of Bravo's Real Girlfriends in Paris, Aja Tour. Welcome, Aja, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's so good to see you again. We've actually met in person twice before, but um, it's really great to be able to have you on the show. Are you in New York or are you in Paris? I'm currently in New York. Awesome. You have to tell me more about your your lifestyle like what is this like sometimes you're in New York sometimes you're in Paris um yeah I mean that was kind of the goal um and that's what brought me to Paris in the first place I wanted to have um a home base in New York still but be able to travel see the world a little bit so moving to Europe Paris was my go-to destination because I have a lot of family there I love that so for anyone who hasn't seen the real girlfriends in Paris I'm just going to give a quick rundown. It premiered on Monday, September 5th, which was Labor Day, I believe. And I remember that because I drove down to the city with my mom and my daughter to come meet you at your <laughs> premiere party. Yes. And I just remember the track. I was like, oh my God, it's Labor Day. That's why there's so much traffic. Like, I'm such an idiot. But um, it was wonderful meeting you and seeing you at BravoCon. That was yes. a pleasant surprise. I was not <laughs> expecting to run into you. I literally went on to the rooftop of the Gansport to go smoke a joint. And then I look over and you're standing there. I was like, oh my gosh, it was so great. What was your BravoCon experience like? Um, well, it was definitely last minute. I was back in New York just for work purposes. And I was like, okay, well, I can at least time this out, like stay a whole week and yes. go to BravoCon. So I bought a ticket and was like, you know what? Like, let's make the best of this. Um, I actually have some friends who work in the industry. So I was very lucky to be invited to that after party on the Friday night that we ran into each other, yeah. the Gansky. Um, so I was there, got to meet a ton of like celebs in my world. Like I know I'm technically a Bravo web, but like being a freshman in the whole industry, it was just like kind of funny to like meet all these people and like, oh my God, like Chanel Ayan, like she's gorgeous. She's stunning. She's a vision. Um, yes. and yeah, so BravoCon Saturday got to meet people like, you know, fans. I didn't know I had fans. So it was really exciting to kind of like walk around the, the main floor of the Javits and take pictures with folks. So very humbling, but also very rewarding. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, so Real Girlfriends in Paris aired on Mondays on Bravo for 10 episodes. And the finale just um, was aired on Halloween, actually. Did you yeah. do anything for Halloween? Did you have like a finale premiere party or anything? Um, no premiere party because I was working on Halloween proper, but that Halloween weekend I was in Dubai to party <sighs> with some friends. <laughs> no way. Wait, did yeah. you like dress up and stuff in Dubai? Um, no, I just wore like, you know, black mini dress, some high heels, just made it simple. Um, I was just hot for, for Halloween. <laughs> did you meet any of the Dubai ladies? Um, I met them in in New York at BravoCon. I didn't yeah. get a chance to meet up with them in Dubai. Like, I think a lot of them were traveling. I think um, Chanel was in Doha for a fashion show. Sarah oh, had a like bunch of it. things going on too, but we had texted and I was like, okay, like maybe next time. Like, it's a very last minute thing. Um, but hopefully in the future, we can uh, have a little bit of a crossover moment. Oh my God, I would die. <laughs> I love Dubai. People didn't really, like Housewives fans in general, they like, they kind of were like, oh, whatever, it's boring. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, Chanel Ian alone is a show. Like, hello. Literally. But anyways, back to your show. So obviously we have you on the show. We also have Emily, Casey, Margo, Victoria, and Anya, all expats from the U.S. And everyone's relatively young compared to me, which... <laughs> But I like that. I think it's really nice because we get to see those years in your life that really shape you from like a young adult to like an actual adult. And <laughs> personally, I really enjoyed what they shared from your story. We got family connections around the world. We got, you know, 
What's it like to try to find a place to call home? You know, that really resonated with me as a consultant after, you know, after I graduated college, I was flying all over the place Monday through Thursday for four years. And like, I was going to all these beautiful places, but it was like, where's home, you know? So I totally relate to that. But we also got to see, you know, your evolving career and your work ethic and, Really, you just gave us range and depth. Like you killed it. I really, (laughs) really enjoyed it. So good job. Congratulations. The finale was kind of (laughs) wild. And that last scene with everyone around, you know, where Emily Emily tells Victoria she looks crazy. And Victoria says, I will not calm down. And Mark is like, yes, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. That was like... TV gold. Okay. But um, (laughs) since the finale, someone posted on Twitter that you are not following Victoria, but Victoria follows you. Can you tell us what is the current status of your relationship with Victoria? Something going on? Um, I would just say that people catch on to things late in the game. So I don't think it's necessarily a change in my life, but I'm Marie Kondo, my Instagram all the time. So it's definitely a fluctuation. Oh, I like that. Marie Kondo. <laughs> what <Whatever> brings you joy. <laughs> well, what about the other castmates? Like, who are you closest with? Who haven't you talked to at all? Um, I definitely talked to everyone since rapping. Like we still have like our group chat and that kind of thing. Um, I'd say the closest are basically what you see on the show, like Anya and Emily since rapping, like would have been my go-to people. Um, I still talk to everyone though and in different capacities, but no one's like, you know, dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> well, that's good. What about, so how about Casey? Cause she had to go back to the US. Did she ever make it back to Paris? Um, I believe she did, but I don't think she ever got a visa. I think she's still just doing the tourist back and forth. Oh, damn. That's like, I have anxiety just thinking about that kind of lifestyle. I mean, a lot of people do it. It's a pretty normal, like if you're going for 90 days and you have a home back in the, I, I could easily do that if I chose not to have a visa um, and just mm. do the 90, but I personally, I also have that anxiety. I'm like, well, I like to have multiple entries at no you know, no issues at the airport or when I'm buying a yeah. ticket online. Yeah, seriously. Well, I mean, like I said, I loved your season. Do you, would you do another season? I mean, like people, some people don't know how hard it is to be on reality TV. Like you're opening up your life. People, literally me, I'm one of them. We tweet about what we're watching and I don't tweet to like be mean. I tweet just like, I'm talking about my perception of what I'm seeing on TV, knowing well that there is a lot of production editing going on and that we're not seeing nearly as much as like we could to make a fair assessment. What has your experience been like, you know, just kind of dealing with that? Um, well, for one, yes, I would do another season. Um, I think there's a lot left on the table that we can all share and bring to the, to the storylines that we have already kind of crafted. Um, what's it like? I mean, I was working a full-time job on New York hours while filming multiple days a week. Um, so the, the, that like steady weight gain that you watch across the season. (laughs) No. <laughs> like, I just I like watched my face like grow rounder and rounder because I oh was my gosh. so busy. <laughs> I didn't notice that, but I totally get that because like I don't know if I could watch myself on TV like that. Yeah, show. It, there's some cringy moments in there for sure. I feel like my best jokes definitely did not make it. I'm like, what are these stupid like little like these are the ones that like spaghetti up the wall? Like, no, that one didn't <laughs> stick. Make a different one. I have so many funny things that I've said, please. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish I had the footage. I want to like go watch it now. Uh, most notably back in Cannes, they uh, did not air my like five minute stand up set that I did impromptu at the beach. So hopefully you, there you is a note to Bob release it. Yeah. Just off the top. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to see this now. Can you do it right now? I want to watch it back. I want to know what I said. (laughs) That's pretty impressive. So what about um, one person who played a big role on the show? I feel like, I mean, 
there was a big storyline around him was Yoan or Yuan. Mm-hmm. Are you, what is your current uh, relationship with him? Oh, I've only met him once in that scene at Chloe Collette. That's it. Oh, I have wow. a relationship with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you meet Andy that night at the Gansport? Um, yeah. I also met him when I bartended at Watch What Happens. Though. Oh yeah. That's right. That's right. That's cool. So during the show, there was, um, when you guys went to Cannes, that you guys basically stayed in a castle um, that Margo <laughs> calls one of her, you know, like side homes. It's got like a whole, it's like a whole estate pretty much. But while you were there, Victoria and Margo left early or no, you guys left early. Can you, can you explain so, yeah. the logistics of that? Cause I was kind of confused. I'm like, wait, did they get kicked out? Cause that's what it kind of seemed like. So basically, yeah, I think it was definitely cut a little weird in explanation. So basically, um, we were all supposed to leave together on the same day. Um, but Margot's father was it coming back to the house. And so she wanted to stay behind um, and invited Victoria to stay, uh, which is no problem. But um, instead of being forthcoming, Victoria had decided to say, oh, it would be too expensive for you guys to stay. So only two of us are going to stay. And like, after just, you know, looking it up, it was a $0 cost change. So I was like, yeah, that's a weird lie. Like, why are you lying about this? You guys are friends. It's not a big deal. So yeah, that, that was weird. like, why it like it gave me pause and like I grew up in a home where it was like lying is like very very taboo so I have always had a very hard time with like like with deception of any sort so definitely put my guard up ever since that yeah that is such a weird thing to lie about like it was just kind of unnecessary I think I also mentioned that on on the episode like kind of when we're recapping it at Emily's apartment it's just that I see where she was coming from and that she wanted to maybe preserve feelings and say okay maybe this is an easier way it's just like blaming it on cost rather than um saying like our relationship is closer and we want to stay together um I just think that honesty is the best policy I agree that was weird though and then she also said she felt uncomfortable like not to you guys, but in her confessional, she said she felt uncomfortable because she heard her name coming out of your mouth. But like when they cut to you, they showed like you were just like recapping Talking. what, yeah, what was going on. Is there something that we missed from the viewer side? Honestly, no. Um, the the gist is no one was talking shit. Honestly, like to be fair, if you have five girls on a trip, someone's name is going to be mentioned. Yeah. Um, and in my recollection, Emily and I were literally just sitting in bed, like shooting the shit, like not yeah. anything like serious. Um, and also like, I am not a big shit talker. Like I'm very blunt and I don't really mince my words, but talking about an experience that happens to be shitty is not the same thing as shit talk. <laughs> That's very true. I like that. I feel like you should put that on a shirt or a mug. <laughs> it's too wordy I'll figure it out (laughs) well we got like Tom's house was broken into and then his car rolled three times like there's nothing too long for us that's so so true I like like high baby gorgeous like that's good (laughs) you know I have um a high baby gorgeous towel on my shop I also have high baby gorgeous kids t-shirts I bought one for my two my youngest they're toddler shirts um, and then I bought myself one. It's like a crop top. <laughs> I love it. It just like makes me feel at least the Barlow is like my favorite. Going back to the can trip, I really love that trip because we get to see a lot of different dynamics with you know the girls. I really loved Anya's reaction to the surprise bachelorette party. Like I cried for her. I thought that was so sweet. And then also what I really love about real girlfriends in Paris is that. What's different about this show than what we've seen on other shows, like in Housewives and things like that, there were actual honest conversations about finances, which we don't often see. And if you look at like Beverly Hills and Salt Lake City, that's clearly a huge issue right now. It's like, where are they getting their money from? (laughs) And stop scamming people for your lifestyle. (laughs) So I I love that you guys talked about it. And and in this friend group, it 
seems that there is a divide. Like some people are kind of struggling. Anya has mentioned that very, vo- she was very vocal about that. But then we have like, we're staying in Margot's castle. Like, <laughs> like how does that happen? And then we see you guys shopping and then there's obviously like different dynamics where you and Anya are talking about like splitting this coat, which was so cute. I was like, oh my God, I would never do that with I was trying to be nice. I just wanted to help her get in. She was I like, know. I'll pay you back another half. I was like, absolutely. Like, hey, I'm very lucky that I make a lot of money at my age. You know, I, I'm a smart girl and I managed to leverage salary over the last few years. I did what yeah. I can. I would have helped out a friend no matter what. I kind of wish I just bought her the coat, but I didn't Aww. want to put that on her. <laughs> I know I struggle with that because I've been that pl- I've been in that place too where like I was young and I had a great salary and I was flying here and there and do you know, like living this really great lifestyle. But then like people my age weren't really, they didn't, they couldn't afford that, those means. And so I don't know, how does that play into your friend group on the real girlfriends in Paris? Sure. Um, I think in like one of the earlier episodes, I briefly mentioned in a confessional that like, there's a split between the girls who come from more money versus the ones who have um, worked really, you know, consistently their whole lives Mm -hmm. to to get to where they are um so I myself Anya and Victoria are on the work for everything side um but I think that Anya is the most vocal about where she is in her life like she's Mm -hmm. mentioned that she has the dream of the Ritz but she doesn't have the financial uh backing right now to to make that dream come true but with Maison Firestone that's her goal um myself like working in e-commerce it's a pretty lucrative um industry and so I'm very lucky like I said to have a good job and be able to sustain myself like at 25 I'm making more or I was making more money than my parents ever have so like Mm -hmm. I don't come from like wealthy background by any means I'm from you know middle class America and Virginia um I think Victoria she I know she has a single mom, but not like super, super familiar with like all of her background financials. I do know that um, she's super lucky that she has Jenny because um, I know Jenny has supported her a lot through her Parisian journey. So I think like, you know, for like the styling and stuff, like working in fashion, like Jenny was a stylist. Um, I'm pretty sure that she was um, helping Victoria out as well. So it's really nice to have like that kind of like mommy friend um, who like, Mm -hmm. I almost was for Anya in that moment with the coat. Like I would have bought her the coat. And I think um, in a similar fashion, um, Victoria has that relationship with Jen. Wow, that is interesting. I didn't know that because I actually, this is making me, this is bringing up, more questions because oh. <laughs> I thought it was weird how like Victoria is saying like I have to do all of these these looks by you know this date or whatever by myself but the the fashion line is Jenny's and it's called Chloe Collette right mm-hmm. so I didn't get it I, I think I even tweeted I was like wait so Victoria does everything and then Jenny just says okay like what that that relationship seems very strange. Is that normal in the fashion industry? I am not well versed in the fashion industry. Like the fashion that I engaged with was more on the big, you know, the big box retailers. Um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, from my understanding, at least, like Jenny had her existing um dropship dress business and then wanted to change directions hired victoria and then Uh um decided to expand so that's why they moved to paris um and then i guess uh lara and her mother are from geneva and they were also brought on board to help with the strategic shift and so it's kind of like that la paris geneva is the you know like the kind of like company's um presence as a representation of who works there um so i think that they i think that chloe collette actually opened up a storefront in la so i think that's still their base um but being in paris is obviously a really great next step as any designer would love to be at paris fashion week and that kind of thing so to my understanding at least like jenny's it's jenny's company victoria is her designer and they are working together i think it's like more of a collaboration or something like that victoria will definitely have the best um the best information on it but she is employed by jenny interesting what is your favorite bravo show have you watched all like are you a big bravo fan and have you like 
Is there one that you're like obsessed with or you're like, I really hate this show? Um, I don't think I'm obsessed with any in particular. I did watch the whole season of Dubai because it was most recent and it was like around the same time that our show was going to be airing. So I was like, let me just test Peacock and make sure it works every week. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think that as far as like being like a big, uh, a big Bravo person, I would say not really. I was I'm more like all over the place with what I watch and it just depends like genre wise like I love comedy and I watch a lot of fictional series but I also love true crime and and so reality tv when it fits in like I was watching a lot of dating shows but um from the Bravo world um a lot of the things that I have like caught up on it's through my Twitter and like I definitely follow tons and tons of Bravo like housewives accounts and that's how I keep up with all the news so like I'm very well versed like I kind of get what's going on um but there's I'm just so behind on all the scenes so that's like I just do the cliff notes version (laughs) you mentioned crime and everything and watching Peacock have you seen one of us is lying I've heard of that I've seen that yes I started watching it. That, that's the one with like, Simon the library. Yeah, he like died, and yeah, it was like yeah. there was I like watched, a murder mystery. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, I remember that. That's I got. So I've watched so much TV since. <laughs> it's so good, but they just came out with a second season, and oh, yeah, it, it's better than the first, which is pretty hard that's to fair. top, right? Well, and I, I was like, if yeah, we get you, a second, it would be better. Than you gotta. You got to watch it because and I'll be, I'll admit it was a little bit hard to get into like the first couple episodes. So just stick with it because I'm telling you it's worth it. But okay. <laughs> so um, what do you think about Twitter? Because that's like how I kind of like elevated my Bravo experience was just going on Twitter. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. what I do you mean- think about it? I love Twitter personally. I have been using it for years. I've made several different accounts because I'm like, oh my God, you're addicted. Get off. And then I'm like, yeah, it's funny though. I'm like, where am I going to find all my porn? (laughs) It's so funny. I love Twitter for, for like just the most random things. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. But it's like, it's my news sometimes if I'm not listening to like WAMU on my, on my like (laughs) <laughs> um yeah it's definitely how I keep up to date with like celebrity pop culture um different tv shows um and also like I loved live tweeting every week for the oh, episode so I was literally like even in Paris I was live tweeting at like 3 30 a.m I was like yeah. I am watching this with y'all like we are in it to win it um oh and God, I love just so like good. seeing all the comments roll in I'm like ooh, like I have that opinion I'm like ooh, that kind of hurt my feelings and it's it's exciting yeah. well that's the part <laughs> that like I would be scared because I would be worried that somebody would say something that would hurt my feelings <laughs> But that's cool that you engage. Yeah, it's like we, I mean, for me personally, I like when the person who's on the show is engaging, like um, the Salt Lake City ladies do it sometimes. Um, Candace from Potomac. Oh my gosh, she's hilarious. But yeah, I think it just takes it to a different level. It's like, we're no longer in, you know, at this point in our culture where, you know, we have to like, you know, go up and turn the, change a channel like when I I remember those days (laughs) but now it's like you're not that old okay (laughs) well I mean like cell phones are basically computers now and you know everyone can engage and everyone's like so accessible through social media so it like changes the experience and I just I think it's so fun I am like obviously addicted to Bravo (laughs) I love that (laughs) But um, I want to hear about your job. So I know that when you started the season, you were, I forgot what your first job was when you started. Uh, I work in e-commerce. Um, I think they weirdly did not ever explain my job. And okay. um, basically I worked for a small third-party fulfillment company. Um, okay. And I worked with a major CPG brand as their brand manager. Um so yeah, I was doing the Lord's work in e-commerce. <laughs> um, but I had one, I had a, a boss who had let me move to Paris and then 
in that process of already being there, um, we had a reshuffle and I got a new boss and she wanted me to come back. And that was that kind of like internal conflict that I was having. I was like, gotcha. do I go back to work? Like just because of my work or do I find a new job? And um, evidently I do make the right decision because I did stay in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your Atelier tour. Did I say it right? I probably did. Um, it. Atelier Touré. <laughs> Atelier Tore. I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's my new company that I created. And so right now, um, it's kind of twofold. One is the like my umbrella company, Atelier Tore LLC. So that allows me to um work as an e-commerce consultant. Um, but I'm also working on a lifestyle brand. So I'm essentially consulting myself um with e-commerce like optimization. Uh, so I'm contracted right now for um, a small company and I work with like more big brands and like big names um, in creating like their e-commerce platforms and their fulfillment. So more of the same, but this time I am sort of my own boss, but still like report to other people. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're a consultant, you're, you're always like reporting to someone like they're your client, but you have to. Like... Exactly. So what was your degree at Cornell? Because like I'm from upstate New York and I'm all about, I love Ivy Leagues. Like, hello. <laughs> I think Cornell is amazing. What was your degree there? Um, I studied hotel administration at the School of Hotel Administration. <laughs> no way. So then yeah. how did you get into e-commerce from there? Um, so I graduated early in December, 2017, and I had gotten a job offer in DC at the United States Institute of Peace to do event planning. So that would have been oh. like a hospitality job, but gotcha. I decided to turn it down because I wanted to stay on campus for the last semester and grad and like walk again in the spring with my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got a job on campus and worked for the hotel school for about 10 months. And when I moved to New York, like they were like okay like we get it you're a new grad go find your thing and mm -hmm. I had a lot of friends who were working at jet.com or formerly jet.com but now known as walmart e-commerce and mm -hmm. so they seemed to have a, a good deal going on like they liked the work and it was interesting and um some of them were from my major so I said okay like let me you know apply let's see how this interview goes and the the skill set really matched up and I got into e-commerce and I haven't really looked back because it it kind of matches up to my entrepreneurial spirit. There's a little yeah. bit of marketing, digital marketing to it. Um, mm -hmm. and still using the analytical and creative side. So yes. um, definitely well-rounded in there. I love that. That's like, I love um, mixing the logical practical side with like the creative side. I think it's yeah. so fun. Um, so then what are you like, where do you see it sounds like a job interview question, right. but <laughs> where well, I'm a resume? Like... <laughs> well, I always want to know, like, where, what are people working towards? Like, what do you want? Where do you want to be in five years? Like, what is your dream, your vision board? Yeah, well, I guess it depends on how this, the show goes, right? Um, if there was a few more seasons, I would be very content in that because I think it's it was a fun experience, honestly, and I like sharing my story. Um, and I love the ability to kind of like provide some inspiration to young women or young people in general who want to move abroad. Um, yeah. And, you know, I like to be a pioneer. Like I'm a mid-sized Black woman from the kind of South. Like it's not <laughs> something you really see on Bravo shows. So it's been really nice to kind of have like, like, you know, put my flag down like hey I'm the mm -hmm. first in that like yeah. <laughs> in that category um oh, yeah. I also I feel like there was there's a housewife who was an ivy did someone go to Columbia oh my god was it Tinsley yes I'm not, the so first, shocking. I'm not the first ivy I'm not the first ivy but I think I'm the youngest <laughs> yes you are for sure wait is she the only other ivy that I know of I guess uh, Anya got, she did like a year at Columbia for her master's in, in art and culture. I don't know the actual title, oh, wow. but, but technically cool. she's also Ivy for her, her grad school. Oh, nice. Um, I lived at Columbia during my internship at JP Morgan Chase before <laughs> Sonia Morgan was a housewife. And oh my goodness. I wish, I kind of wish that I was a Sonia Morgan intern instead of a JP Morgan intern. That would have been way more fun, but yeah. I can't okay. imagine. Um, I worked at BlackRock at one point in my life. Like I, I can't be one from a BlackRock intern to a Bravo 
in first. <laughs> I feel like I would be a Sonia intern right now because it would just be so fun. But yeah. it would probably be a nightmare too. Um. <laughs> she actually had uh, said, I think it was at Bravocon that she wanted to meet the real girlfriends in Paris. So Sonia, if you hear this, I'm in New York. Let's hang. <laughs> I love Sonia Morgan. Oh my gosh. She's like so busy. She's doing a show with Luann. And then she also tours and does like her own comedy show so or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you guys um, can I do never comedy together. Question. Yeah. Sorry, um, I don't even remember. Do in five years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where did we go from there? <laughs> um, five years is a long time from now, in my opinion. Like, I don't know what even next year looks like. Yeah. Um, I would definitely like to get my business up off the ground and have a little bit more breadth there, um, work on my lifestyle brand. And I don't know, I think something that also wasn't really touched on in the show that much is like my love for food. And like, I went to hotel school, like I have a culinary, somewhat culinary background, and I have a food Instagram page as well. And it's something I'm really passionate about. So if I had the the nest egg and the the time on my hands, I would definitely love to get into the restaurant business and and do something like that I'm actually passionate about. That would be amazing. You did get me curious on what foie gras, foie gras, I think I can't foie say that. that with um, caviar. Yes. Right. Um, you guys had that. We didn't get to try. It. I know. I know. That was a bummer. <laughs> I forgot to go back to caviar last few times that I've been there. But like for me, foie gras is such a winter food. So this summer I was not about to go seeking it out. <laughs> it is kind of like it's heavy right rich and heavy and rich, rich and um, heavy. yeah you eat it with like caramelized onions and nice country <sighs> bread like oh it's so i want to try that now though with the caviar like i just feel like that would be amazing i think you could probably find the two individually and just make some it on top yeah i might have to do that but the one that you found seems so amazing i was like when she said that that she lost all the cheese and everything i felt the pain I was like oh yep. I was oh. like why am I here then <laughs> <laughs> right oh my gosh well I will make sure that the link to your website is included in the show notes and I want to make sure everyone goes and checks out your Instagram and Twitter I'll put that in the show notes as well and I want to thank you for being here today yeah thank you for having me it's been fun